This video explains how to install the Fiber Patrol FP400 Fiber Optic Zone Based Intrusion Detection System. The installation procedure is divided into the following sections important information before you start, processor installation, sensor cable installation, gate protection, detection zones, and connecting power and communications. When installing or performing maintenance on the system, always follow laser light and optical fiber safety guidelines. The FP400 processor contains a Class 1 laser light source. Never look directly into the end of a fiber connector. Ensure that the light source is off before using a scope to check a fiber optic connector. Use care when working with exposed optical fibers. The bare fibers are 125 microns in diameter and can easily penetrate skin. Always wear safety glasses when working with optical fibers. Always dispose of bare fibers in a container that is designed for fiber optic waste. Never dispose of bare fibers in a standard waste receptacle. Installation of a four-zone site typically takes about two days. On a normal eight-foot chain-link fence, attaching the sensor cable takes about one hour per 100 meters. Budget one hour per zone for on-site fusion splicing. You will require a fusion splicer and consumables, a fiber optic tool kit, mounting hardware and tools, hand tools, a wood dowel or rod for dispensing cable, RTV sealant for securing fiber splices. Review product documentation to avoid installation issues and maximize system performance. The Fiber Patrol FP400 system includes the following components. The Fiber Patrol processor, one zone kit per detection zone, one field enclosure kit per detection zone, plus additional ones is required for protecting other cable splices. The sensor cable, available in reels of 250 or 1,000 meters. Nylon cable ties. A communication card if RS-422 or fiber is used for network connections. Select a location to install the FP400 processor. The FP400 supports up to 20 kilometers of non-sensing lead-in cable, so the processor does not need to be installed near the perimeter. The same cable is used for both lead-in and detection zones. The processor itself may be installed indoors or outdoors with a protective enclosure. The processor includes mounting flanges and may be wall-mounted, installed in a rack mount tray, or DIN rail mounted. Each FP400 processor supports up to four zones, with each zone having a maximum cable distance of 300 meters. This video assumes a zone layout similar to the following. Other configurations are possible. Refer to the documentation for information. Each zone is defined by start and end modules, which are packaged together as a zone kit. For example, a four zone site requires four zone kits. A kit includes splice sleeves and labels. Note that the modules come with pre-attached SC slash APC connectors. Do not discard these connectors. They are required to attach to the lead-in fibers to the processor. SenStar requires that all fiber splices be fusion splices. Mechanical splices are not allowed. Each splice tray holds up to 12 splices, along with any start or end modules. When making splices, ensure the fibers are exactly the same length. To reduce the number of splices, a mid-span access technique may be used at each field splice enclosure. See the video, Mid-Span Fiber Access, for information. Run the lead-in cable out to the perimeter. Place the cable in conduit when buried or otherwise left unsecured. Leave a service loop at the start and end of the lead-in section. Attach the sensor cable directly to the fence fabric using UV-rated cable ties. You can attach the cable to the midpoint of each link or the intersection of each link but be consistent and don't mix or alternate them. Space the cable ties approximately every 30 centimeters and maintain a consistent height on the fence. Hand tighten each tie so that the cable is snug against the fence. Note that over tightening may damage the cable. The sensor cable is typically installed halfway up the fence. If the fence has a center rail, install the cable approximately 30 centimeters above the rail. Service loops can provide extra cable for use during fusion splices and future repairs. Leave a 10 meter loop at the start and end of each zone. The loop can be attached directly to the fence using eight evenly spaced cable ties. 
at corners or heavily reinforced sections, run a cable along the post to provide extra sensitivity. The cable should be snug against the post, but still movable with your finger. When bending the cable, avoid sharp turns or angles that could damage the fiber. The cable has a recommended minimum bend radius of 6 centimeters. At single or double swinging gates, add the sensor cable to each gate panel 30 centimeters from the edge. The Fiber Patrol Cable Management Kit for gates may be used to assist with cable routing onto each gate panel. To get from one panel to another, route the sensor cable underneath the gate area. To assist with future maintenance, add a service loop of at least 10 meters of additional cable near the gate area. Sliding gates are typically protected with a SenStar wireless gate sensor, a PIR, or microwave. Contact your SenStar technical representative for information about sliding gate solutions. To bypass the sliding gate, route the sensor cable in a conduit underneath the gate area. A start and end module defines each detection zone. The following diagram shows fiber wiring required to support four zones. Unused fibers may be repurposed for communications or other functions. When making fusion splices, note the following requirements. The average loss over the full length of installed cable must be less than 0.3 dB per kilometer. The individual event loss limit must be less than 0.1 dB. Fusion splice performance typically results in a loss of 0.01 to 0.03 dB. Keep the length of all RX and TX fiber pairs the same. To secure the cable within the enclosure, first cut or express the fibers as per the instructions in the product guide or mid-span fiber access video. Wrap the ends of the sensor cable three times using the supplied felt tape. Attach the grommets to the cables. You may slice the grommet halfway to slide it over the cable. Secure the cable to the tray using the supplied cable tie. If only one cable is used, use a grommet with a filler plug to seal the opening. The splice tray holds up to 12 splice sleeves as well as start and end modules. Sleeves or start and end modules may be double stacked in the channel pair slots. In this example, a start module is used to form zone 1. Cut off the SC slash APC connectors, leaving 1 meter of fiber. Do not discard the connectors. Splice the start module to RX1 and TX1. In this example, an end module is used for zone 4. The end module's Faraday mirrors are spliced to fibers RX4 and TX4. This example shows the start module for zone 2 and the end module for zone 1. After the splices are complete, waterproof the fiber connections. First, secure the splice tray to the enclosure using the supplied screws. Seal the end of the buffer tubes and secure the modules and splice sleeves with RTV sealant. Use the supplied lubricant to thinly coat the four sides of the grommets. Close and latch the enclosure. Secure the enclosure with the supplied security screw. It requires a T10 security bid. Attach the field splice enclosure directly to the fence fabric or post using the nylon zip ties. In this section, we will connect the sensor cables, optional communications card, and apply power. To connect the sensor cable, splice the SC slash APC connectors to the lead-in cable. Secure the fibers within the splice tray and leave a service loop for future use. If your network uses RS-422 or single-mode fiber connectivity, attach the communications card as shown. The FP400 processor can be powered via a PoE switch and draws a maximum of 2 watts. To power on the processor, simply connect the Ethernet port to the network. If you are not using Ethernet, connect a 12 to 48 volt DC power supply. The processor automatically boots up when the power is applied. Now that the system is installed and powered on, you are ready to calibrate the detection zones. See Configuration Overview video for information.